All right, well, we're joined today by Rusty Glines with Canopy Realty. I am Adam Hammond with Movement Mortgage, and Rusty and I have known each other for a long time and in the same industry, and we are uh, just going to kind of answer some questions from a real, real estate agent's perspective, also from, from a mortgage uh, lender's perspective. But I'll just start, Rusty. Uh, why don't you tell everybody a little bit about yourself? and how you got into real estate and how long you've been in it. All right, um, well, I got it. I've been in real estate this year will be eight years. I got in it about 2015. Um, the whole reason for me getting into real estate was, was uh, for the investing side of it. That's what got me interested in it. And uh, I took, you know, some classes online and I didn't live here. I lived in Ohio at the time and uh, I was gonna plan on moving back and I went ahead and did all my classes online and, you know, went ahead and knocked that stuff out. And luckily, uh, when I moved back, I was I was able to to, to start real estate uh, part time. I had a full time job, um, and I did that for about a year and a half. Um, it just you know, I, my feelings was you can't jump into something like that without having some kind of income or whatever. So uh, luckily, I, I did it for about a year and a half. Was able to do that and uh, got enough business going where I jumped into it full time and uh, I started off with Coal Banker. I uh, worked there for a few years, and then uh, in 2020 we started Canopy. Uh, and you know, it's 2020 obviously was a was a, a wild year in real estate, and uh, it really took off. Uh, of course, we started in March around the same time COVID did, and uh, honestly, was kind of scared to death because everything was shutting down. Yeah. Uh, but little did we know uh, how how much that would affect the real estate industry, and uh, it's been great ever since. You know, I've, yeah. I've been very blessed. Uh, to be able to do it, so. Well, since you brought up it, it's been great ever since. Let, let's hit something uh, head on. The media, I, I, you know, I watch the media some, and, and all you hear is the real estate market's collapsing. It's another 2008, you know, this doom and gloom theory, but, uh, you know, that's what gets clicks or sales. Yeah. We all know that. So. Why don't you give an update on the Marshall County, Alabama, and the surrounding areas, uh, and and what the market's doing, yeah. what you're seeing, even as rates have gone up and, and things have slowed down a little bit. Yeah, um, a lot of that's of course that's a, the biggest question that we get right now is what's happening, what's going to happen, you know, because it did it started slowing down last quarter of 2022, right? When the, you know the rates and everything was affecting everybody and inflation and all that jazz. But uh, we did, we, we, it did slow down. Um, and I, since I got in it, you know, 2015, uh, we've been in a pretty good market stuff too. We've been, you know, been pretty strong. Uh, so we haven't really seen anything like this now. But, um, well, well and, and rates were the two. Well, yeah, yeah. Um, so, uh, and that scares a lot of people off. Uh, I think that we, everybody sees the, uh, the data and the, and the news, you know, nationwide. But we, uh, we're in a very good market. Um, as Huntsville, you know, now is the biggest city, uh, the fastest growing city in Alabama, just a small suburb of, of Huntsville. We've got the lake, you know, surrounding, and then Alpville's got Sand Mountain Park, you know, stuff that's bringing a lot of stuff to Alpville with our population and the people that's moving here. Uh, we are still in a very good market. Uh, rates are affecting the buyers, don't get me wrong, but we're still selling. People are still listing their houses. Uh, even after the new year, starting to get more calls. You, you always get the people that I'm going to wait till after the new year. So we're starting to see that now. Uh, but we did see a slowdown towards the end around you know, Christmas and the holidays. Uh, but as, as, a, as a whole, for our market, we're still having these people move in to Huntsville. Lots to of work. jobs available. Yeah, lots of jobs. Stuff, yeah. Everybody's hiring. Uh, so uh, I, don't, I don't think we're going to see a crash like we did in 2008. By all means, uh, the, the, just the data uh, that we see here locally does, doesn't prove that. Well, yeah, and I don't, I don't think the data nationwide proves it either. Yeah. Um, you know, we subscribe in the mortgage industry to uh, MBS Highway, and we, we did a presentation not too long ago for real estate agents, and, and Barry Habib is really good and, and, and in layman's terms can explain what's going on and the data does not support a crash. So don't believe the hype. Yeah. Uh, don't, yeah. don't believe the negativity. Um, there are lots of opportunities out there. 
I think we're doing a good job too locally in, in, your, in the lending and, and in real estate too. Uh, as, as realtors, we're doing a good job of trying to do a good job of explaining to the consumers. It, you know, don't believe all the hype. Yeah. Um, and it's just that they do. They believe they, they're buying the hype. A lot of misinformations out there yeah. by people that, you know, are technically call themselves experts, but they're, you know, they may not be, or, or they may be, but they're just, they have a different feeling. But um, we're insulated a little bit in, in North Alabama, of course, with, with, Huntsville being so big and, yeah. and the arsenal and all that so um, it's still a great time and, and let me just add from a lending perspective you know rates in the fives are historically very good, very good. they're still yeah. at, a, at a historic low yeah you know did we get accustomed to two percent interest rates oh we got spoiled Absolutely. we got spoiled yeah. um, but you know there are there are uh, Creative products that we have, the two one buy down is the one that comes to mind where you can buy the rate down um, the first year, uh, two points the first year, one point the second year, and then it goes to the normal rate. However, if rates come down, you can refinance it. And, yeah. uh, you know, we run movement does uh, client advantage program that. Uh, you know, we don't charge. We won't charge lender fees if rates go down and you refinance uh, in the next 12 to 18 months. Yes. Yeah. So well, that's, a, that's always a question because people, you know, I tell people we can refinance. You know, if rates come down, but with those programs like that, you know, they're saving some money. They're not having to go back yeah. and, and, and you know spend the money on the closing costs to do it. Just try to save some money. So it, yeah, and and there is a a, a a fee that you pay for that buy down, but it's it's essentially an escrow. If you refinance, it's credited to to the, the new loan, so as a principal reduction. So it's a great great way to get, you know, if rates are at, it's a good way to get rates down early on in the in the mortgage. And like I said, you can always refinance as soon as they come down. Yeah, and I, and you know, from from our standpoint, I don't want buyers or sellers to miss out on that just because they're afraid of rates staying high. You know, don't miss out on your dream home. If it comes available because of a high rate, yeah, if you're paying those investment opportunities. Oh yeah, right absolutely. Now. Because it's going to come down. I mean, when the data shows, you know, even in 2024, to possibly be back down in the fours. I guess that's that's the latest that I've seen. Uh, you know, and and you don't want to miss out now. And yeah, for sure. When you can refinance later. Yeah, and and historically, um, you know, you hear the talk of the R word recession and yeah. whether we're in it or we're not or it's coming or it's not, I, you know, that's over my head. But I do know that uh, don't be scared of that because in, in history shows most of the time in recessions, housing does very well. Yeah. It's one of the safest bets yeah. you can make. So um, getting back to this, uh, tell me what a for a prospective buyer or a seller kind of from a 30,000 foot view what do you what what does a real estate agent do uh, why do I need a real estate agent why is it so important to have a real estate agent well uh, in, in both buying so there's a lot of moving parts mm -hmm. and when you're trying to pull all that together it, it gets over overwhelming and if you're trying to do it by yourself there's there's some things you can miss out and legally you know, come back to bite you in the butt. And that's what we're here for, is to, to make sure that everything stays on track, that you're doing the right things, contractually, legally, ethically, all that stuff, whether you're buying or selling. Um, you know, buyer standpoint, you know, you want, obviously you want to try to get hooked up with the lender um, and to help them guide, you know, you do your job on guiding them through the process too. But there's a lot of stuff going into it. You know, we don't just sign a contract and sit back and wait. You know, there's a lot of stuff going on behind the scenes uh, you know, getting set up with title, inspections, um, pest control, all the stuff, repairs, anything like that. You know, and we, we're able to handle that for the buyers. Same thing on the selling side, you know, getting, getting it put together, let them know what, how much their house is worth, uh, showing them the true comps, you know, not just going off what Zillow or Truly or anything like that says, because that, that's a common mistake on the seller standpoint too, is, well, Zillow says my, you know, house is worth this much. Which Zillow, Truly, whoever, I mean, that's just an algorithm they created with data. Right. Um, so you, you can't take it as fact. Now, is it a guide? Of course. Yeah. But. And they've gotten a lot better. Don't get me yeah. wrong. 
uh, the, the data at Fort Zillow has gotten a lot better, and it's getting closer to what you know it could be. But we try, we, we're able to give them good data, um, and then you know when the person wants to sell their house, there may be some stuff that they, they need to do to, to fix it up or get it, stage it, market the property. You know that's our that's our job to help them do that, and it's. It, you know, if you're trying to do it by yourself, meet, meet them at all the inspections. Yeah, um, you're gonna miss out on money too. Uh, you know, for if you're selling a house, tip. You know, the data shows that you could sell your house, you can get more money out of it when you use realtor. Um, and then both both sides. I mean, you ha you gotta get it to the closing table, and we're able to help each other out. Yeah, and, and you know, informational things like this. Um, but real estate agents, some most study the market um, and, and they're more in tune with what a, a neighborhood or whatever yep. and, you know and from the lending's perspective you know appraisals come up a lot yeah and you know I hear well Zillow's got it at this or that or whatever but you know a, appraisers are just taking data live sales sometimes in the most of the time in the uh, MLS sometimes not um, if they happen to know of a private sale or something like that. Um, but they use that data and crunch numbers and come up with, with values. Um, in your last few deals, and, and from the data in, in Marshall County, what's the appreciation like? And I know it depends on where you are, et cetera, yeah. but um, just on average. Um, well, as far as like over the last, Few years, whatever. I would just say over the last twelve months. Yeah, over the last year. It, well, I think it kind of has leveled off the last the last year. We've seen such a good a big spike uh, in twenty you know twenty twenty two or twenty twenty. I'm sorry. And when you know COVID and the rates dropped, you know, and everything else, prices went up, demand, all that stuff. I think we peaked out then. We've kind of leveled off the last year. I think. Um, are we seeing some come down now? Yes, I think so. Um, you. We, we went from uh, some contingencies uh, in the contracts to uh, or to no contingencies during that spike, and now we're back to you know uh, seller concessions, uh, some you know buyer getting some stuff fixed and yeah. stuff like that. Uh, but I think we've leveled off as far as appreciation stuff. Yeah, and don't you think that history shows that? I mean, it's just like the stock market; it's, yeah. it's up and down. It's right Fortunately. Away. Yeah, fortunately for housing, it's it's not a, most of the time it's not as drastic. Yeah, it's in it, and it's a safe investment. Um, it's the largest net worth uh, asset that you can buy. So um, we're we're both passionate about what we do, but I want you to understand that we're also passionate about helping people, and and that's a good way to. I mean, that's a great way to build net worth. Um, and protect your investments. I think um, so too. And it, the best thing to do is, 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 and I learned that from the very beginning, is just it's all about building relationships. Yeah. You know, and that, that gets you going and, and helps you out. I think. Yeah, a lot. it does. Um, what are what are some common mistakes? Let's let's talk from the buyer's perspective, mm -hmm. um, not, and then we'll get to the seller. But what are some common mistakes? You you receive um, a call from a prospective client, what are some common mistakes that either one, they don't know to ask, or two, that you see often people ask or or run up against in the process? Uh, from a buyer standpoint, uh, well, initially, it's the first thing is they just think they can go start looking at houses and not know their budget. Uh, we run into that a lot, and that's the, one of the first qu first questions we ask them: Are you are you approved? Are you paying cash? Or are, you, are you getting a loan? Well, I don't know yet. You know, well, we need to get you approved. That's the very first thing. Uh, and I try to, you know, some people take it like you're just kind of lazy and you don't want to go show them houses. But I try to explain to them: This is this is benefiting you too. You know, not only for the seller, but you too. So you you know what you're getting into. You don't want to be maxed out and stuff like that. So the biggest thing is just not knowing where to start. Um, as far as getting you know the approval process yeah so so you would say um, get pre-approved which is what movement mortgage would do for you um, after that they're pre-approved uh, 
they're looking for a home, what, what's their next step and um, what should they, there are a couple of things I thought of that they probably may or may not know to ask for, yeah. um, home inspections. Home inspections. Um, so tell me, they're going, you, you find the house that they want to look at, tell me where it goes from there. Yep, uh, they want to look at it, they like it, you know, what's next? Well, we need to make an offer, you know, and based on what they think the house is worth, and go from there, get it accepted, yeah. and they don't know what's next, you know. So there's a home inspection, appraisal process, um, any other um, inspections, pass stuff like that, and who pays for it? Where's the money come from? Um, and then going back to making the offer, or earnest money. That's a, that's a big, you know, people nowadays they don't, they, uh, the younger generation doesn't know exactly what that is. It's just a good faith, and it's, it's letting the seller know how serious you are about buying the house. That way, if you do something crazy, just back out for no reason, you're going to lose that money. Otherwise, you get the money back. Well, and that, and that from a seller's perspective, they lose marketing. They lose time, time on the market. Yeah. Um, and moving, you know, if they moved and stuff like that. So that does um, play a big, you know, factor into the offer. This is a funny question, but so. <laughs> So if somebody is under contract, they've got, you know, they got pre approved, they're under contract, they found the house they want, we're doing home inspection, going through the appraisal, the lending process, is that a good time to buy a car? Probably not. <laughs> no. Yeah, so absolutely not. I asked that question because, you know, drastic changes in financial situations, whatever yours is, um, by adding a car payment, um, can change your debt to income and, and can affect the loan that you've signed a contract on given earnest money in good faith um, and then you you don't qualify for you know a, let's say debt to income um, because each loan has different guidelines and you you can affect that yeah. contract yeah people don't know that people and don't realize that once you're approved you're gonna have to get the they're going to check it again. The contract. Yeah, and, they're, and the lender's going to check your credit again at, at the end of the process to make sure you you haven't quit your job, you haven't, you haven't uh, bought any, a new car or anything like that. And we, we, we do try to tell people that, but you got somebody like Adam here to, that's going to guide you along the process and make sure that you don't, you know, he's got the check sheet of stuff that you, of do's and don'ts. Uh, and one of them is not, don't go buy a new car or anything, big purchases like that, because uh, that can. I mean, that, I mean, even paying, even paying cash, there are asset reserves requirements for certain loans. If you're buying an investment property, let's say, so even people think, well, I'm not adding debt. Yeah. Well, if if that drops you below the number of the amount of reserves, you're going to get a call from me asking, hey, do you have more assets yeah. we can verify? There so it's really good when you look. It's a 30 day, 30 day or less process typically and um, movement average is 18 days okay. um, in North Alabama. So just throwing that That's in good. there, but hey, um, so it's a 30 day process or 45 day process, depending on the contract. Just don't buy anything, don't make any drastic moves. That doesn't mean don't buy groceries or anything. It's just don't finance anything and then don't big ticket items. And, don't uh, say that. And, and if you do, Ask your agent yeah. your agent's going to either call the lender or, um, you know, we'll have the borrower call the lender and and we'll get it figured out. So that does come up and I'll tell them, uh, you know, that, that's not a me question. That's, that's your lender question. Make sure you call them and find out. Yeah. And I haven't done this. It seems like there used to be 17 different parties involved on a yeah. transaction, uh, on a, per, a normal purchase transaction. but. Um, so that brings up another point. So you got the real estate agent for if, if they're representing a buyer and seller, or you may have a buyer's agent and a, a seller's agent. Right. Um, so then you got the lender, you got an appraisals, appraisers involved, a home mm -hmm. inspectors involved. If you need a survey, yep. um, contractors, contractors, control. all that stuff. So. There's a lot of third parties touching yeah, that, yeah. Um, and of course, movement would handle the loan. You would handle the buyer, or seller, or both, and um, and you know, local real estate agents. 
you know, we're all, and, and mortgage lenders, we're all in, in the market. So we're, we know people that, you know, we don't, we just recommend. Yeah. We have, um, you know, there's, there's a lot of lenders around. There's a lot of real estate agents. There's a lot of home inspectors, um, you know, so, and the lender handles the appraiser. So just ask, you know, call Rusty and ask him. Um, he may have worked. We got a long list of people. That yeah, pass. yeah. So there's lots of good people yeah. around here that. But that, use local people. Yeah. I mean, we try to save local. I mean, always, like you said, we're involved in the community and everything. So we, we know people and, and can get so, things done. So quick. that brings up a question. How's it, is it harder to deal, you know, with local face to face that you can, is it easier or is it easier to deal with online lending? Man, that, that's, the, that's the first thing I tell people is just use somebody local. There, it's, it's so much easier. When you're dealing with somebody local, especially if you know them, if you need anything on the weekends after hours, they're always, you know, just a phone call or text away and they'll text you back. You know, when you got these online people, you you initiate the conversation with one person and then another stage with somebody else and then somebody else, it's like you're getting passed on, you know, a couple times. But with, you know, local people, you're always able to talk to and deal with the same people and same person throughout the process. And it just, it, it is, it makes it so much easier to deal with. I mean, I, I'm not knocking them, you know, whatever, but, and, and the local people can still do the types of loans that the online people can do. And not, I guess a lot of people don't know that, you know, your VA loans and all this stuff too. Uh, they, the local lenders can still do these programs and, and probably get you a better rate too. So I, I always tell people it's, it's so much easier, you know, just to deal with somebody local. And, and, and local realtors too that know the area and, and are involved here too. They they know the ins and outs and who to and, call. And it's, it's uh, you know, in a lot of markets, yeah, it it is a uh, commit, both both jobs are commissioned, so it's highly competitive. Yep. Um, sometimes call, causes a divide between one real estate company and another real estate yep. company or whatever. Um, but, in this area, we got a lot of good agents. Oh, we got we got some good mortgage loan officers yeah. too. So, um, of course, Rusty and I would love the opportunity to work with you. But um, there are good people. Just use someone local. Yeah. Um, so, last question I'll ask, and if you, uh, what issues do you have, or do you see often? What's the most one you see uh, when it comes to dealing with? The loan piece of it, because I I have my thoughts and just from what I hear from agents, I'm yeah. just curious what. Like the biggest thing that we've ran into, and not necessarily local people, but was the communication. Uh, I was going to ask, is communication? Yeah, communication is key because uh, that can, you know, hinder a deal or, okay. or whatever. So uh, there's there's steps along the process that the lender needs to know what's going on 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 your side too, as far as the real estate agent. So good communication between the two can can make the process, you know, just smooth and, and easy. But if you're if you're not communicating, something gets lost, you yeah. know, and, and you end up missing deadlines and stuff like that, and it pushes everybody back. Uh, so that's that's the biggest thing is communication. Uh, but we get a lot of people, uh, buyers or, or sellers, what's going on? Well, I'll call the lender and find out what's going on, just just so they know. Because uh, if not, then they're they're just kind of out in left field. Proactive. Proactive. Yeah. Um, I know. I've I do my best. I fail sometimes too, just like everybody. But I, you know, I really try each week to give each real estate agent and each borrower. I mean, we update them electronically throughout the way, but I try to keep them up to date. Yeah. Um, and that's another good thing about somebody local. You know, they'll send you a text, say, "Hey, this is what's going on with the loan," or yeah. anything like that. That's that's my thing. My, I guess communication. Yeah. Well, um, I I know that. We both love, grew up here. Um, we both love the area. We've got a lot of good agents, good mortgage people. But um, you know, I appreciate you coming and, yeah, appreciate and you. Uh, talking. And um, guys, we we would love to help you. So just reach out to Rusty Glines at Canopy Realty. Phone number two five six nine six zero two zero two four. And uh, I'm Adam with Movement Mortgage, Adam Hammond with Movement Mortgage. It's 256-755-0629. Uh, if, if we can just answer questions, whatever it may be, uh, we, we would love to assist. Absolutely. Thank Appreciate you. Appreciate it, man. Absolutely.